it's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Hey, hey, let's go. Chapter eight, lesson number six, odd and even functions. What is that all about? Well, let's say we are given a function f of x. Imagine if we worked out f of negative x and we found that was the exact same thing as f of x. Well, what you would say then is that that function is, dun, 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 it is an even function. So if f of negative x works out to be f of x, then it is even. If you have an even function, then that will be symmetrical about the y-axis. And the reason for that is that the f of negative 1 will be the exact same as f of 1. f of negative 2 will be the exact same as f of 2, and so on. So really an even function, for example, would look like that. And you can see that when x would be, for example, 1, well, you've got a point up here. If you have negative 1, well, you've got a point that is just symmetrical to that. If you add 2, well, you've got a point. If it was negative 2, again, it would be the exact same thing. If you had a point here and you go down, if you choose negative, whatever x would be, and go down, well, it's just going to be the exact same thing. So you can see that it will be symmetrical about the y-axis. And that's what you get if you have an even function. Similarly, if you have f of negative x, and that works out to be the negative of whatever f of x was, then that function would be, you got it, that would be an odd function. If you have an odd function, well, the graph is no longer symmetrical about the y-axis, but what you would have is half-turn symmetry about the origin. And the reason you have that is that the f of negative 1 would be the negative of whatever f of 1 would be. f of negative 2 would be the negative of whatever f of 2 would be. So, for example, an odd function may look something like this. And you can see that's got half-turn symmetry about the origin. And look here again, if you have the f of negative 1, let's say that was about there, well, whatever value that would be, well, that's just the negative of whatever f of 1 would be. And the f of negative 2, whatever that would be, well, it's going to be the negative of whatever f of 2 would be. So you can see there that it's going to be uh, it's going to have half-turn symmetry, so it's going to be an odd function. To determine whether a function is odd, even, or neither, what you do is you find an expression for f of negative x, and then you compare it to f of x. If f of negative x is the exact same as f of x, then the function is even, and if you end up getting the negative of f of x, then the function would be odd. If you end up getting neither of these, if you don't get f of x or you don't get negative f of x, then the function would be neither odd nor even. It is also useful to know the following trig identities when you are dealing with these questions. So if you have sine of negative x, well, if you think about the graph for sine x, if I graph that just at the side very quickly, well, if you have the sine x, if you extend that back the way, well, you will see that whatever you have, see sine 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, well, on the other side, if you've got negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, you have the negative of whatever you would have. So that would be the same as the negative of sine x. With cos as well, if you think about your cos graph, well, your cos graph is going to be symmetrical about your y-axis. It's just going to continue looking like that. So really, cos of 10 degrees is the same as cos of negative 10. Cos of 20 will be the same as cos of negative 20. So really, it's the exact same thing. So cos of negative x will be the same as cos x. And tan, if you have that as well, if you graphed it, then you would have something that looks like this if you just draw the first part of it. Well, it's going to be, it's going to have your half turn symmetry there. So, really, tan of negative x, if you had, say, negative 10, well, that would be the negative of tan of 10. If you had the tan of negative 20, well, that would be the negative of tan of 20. It is useful to remember them because they come in to these questions. Let's start with example one. Prove that the function f of x equals x to the power of 4 take away 2x squared plus 3 is an even function. How do we start solving this? What's the first thing that you would do, Maria? 
Brilliant. You have to consider f of negative x. So considering f of negative x, well, we know we're replacing x with negative x. So on the right-hand side, replace x with negative x. So we've got negative x to the power of 4. Take away 2 times negative x all squared plus 3. If you have negative x to the power of 4, well, negative x times negative x is going to be positive x squared. Multiply that by another negative x, you get negative x cubed. And multiply that by another negative x, you would get x to the power of 4. Negative x squared, negative x times negative x. Well, the two negatives make a positive, so that's just the same as x squared. Multiply by negative 2, and that's negative 2x squared. And plus 3 will stay as it is. But if you look at that, dun dun dun, that is what we had right at the start x to the power of 4 take away 2x squared plus 3 is equal to f of x. We can replace that with f of x. And what does that mean? Well, it means f of negative x is equal to f of x. Which means then that it tells you in the question we're asked to prove that it's even. And that is what it means. It means it is going to be an even function. Yeah! Example 2 proved that the function f of x equals x cubed take away 2x is an odd function. Once again, what do you do, Taylor? Brilliant. You consider f of negative x. So thinking about f of negative x, replace x with negative x. On the right hand side, replace x with negative x. So we've got negative x cubed, take away 2 times negative x. If you work out negative x all cubed, what does that give you? Good, it gives you negative x cubed. And if you work out negative 2 times negative x, that gives you plus 2x. If we're wanting to prove it's an odd function, well, remember for an odd function, the f of negative x has to be the negative of f of x. So we are wanting to get the negative of this. How do we go about doing that? What could you do next, Drew? Brilliant. If you take out that negative as a common factor, well, if you take out the negative, well, it's negative 1 times the x cubed will give you negative x cubed. And negative 1 times what will give you that positive 2x? Well, it's going to be negative 2x. Perfect. So take out a negative as a common factor. Therefore, we've got the x cubed take away 2x, and we can replace the x cubed take away 2x with f of x. So we have negative f of x. Therefore, we can say that f of negative x is equal to negative f of x, and that means the function will be odd. Brilliant. There you go. And that is you proved it. Example 3, investigate whether the function f of x equals x cubed sine x is odd, even, or neither. What would you do for this to start off, Gregor? Brilliant. You would consider f of negative x. So, f of negative x equals, replace x with negative x. So instead of x cubed, we've got negative x in brackets cubed. Instead of sine x, we've got sine negative x. After that, well, if you've got negative x all cubed, that works out to be negative x cubed. And the sign of negative x, remember the trig identities that I spoke about just before example 1. Well, if you've got the sign of negative x, that is the same as negative sign x. Again, if you think about the graphs for that, if you think about your sign graph just drawn very roughly, you would have something that looks like this. And you can see that the sign of negative x, so say this value here, well, that's the negative of whatever sign x would be. So the sign of negative x works out to be negative sign x. You've got a negative, you've got another negative, you're multiplying them together, which will make that positive. So that's going to be x cubed sign x. But if you look at that, bum, bum, bum x cubed sine x is equal to f of x. So you can say that is equal to f of x. Yeah. And what does that mean if f of negative x is equal to f of x? What could you say, Kyle? Brilliant. Well done. You got it perfectly right. It means the function will be even. Yo. Example 4, part of the straight line graph of a function f of x is shown. You've got your straight line. It's going through 2, 0. It's going through 0, c. Part A, sketch the graph of f to the negative 1 of x, so the inverse function, showing the points of intersection with the axes. And part B, state the value of k for which f of x plus k is an odd function. And finally, part C, state the value of h for which f of x plus h, but the modulus of that, is an even function. So let's start off with part A, sketch the graph of f to the negative 1 of x. That is your inverse function. How do you go about, Avina? 
sketching your inverse function. Perfect, you want to reflect it in the line y equals x. So if you draw in that line y equals x, that's it drawn in there, ain't it lovely? You've got y equals f of x just drawn faintly down here, and you want to reflect that over. So this line y equals x is going to be your line of symmetry. If you reflect it over, you would have something that looks like this. To get the coordinates, all you're doing is you're swapping the x and y coordinates about. So here, f of x is going through 2, 0. If you swap the 2 and the 0, you get 0, 2. So reflecting that over, the inverse will go through 0, 2. It's the same with 0, c. 0, c, if you reflect that over, will go through c, 0. So reflecting that down, that is what you would get. So sketch the graph of the inverse function, shows the, showing the points of intersection. We have done that. That there, the dark blue line, will be your answer. B, state the value of k for which f of x plus k is an odd function. So what you need to think about for this is that an odd function will need to have half turn symmetry about the origin. And if you think you've got f of x plus k, what does a plus or minus do on the end of your function, Abby? Good. What that's going to do is it'll move the function up or down. So, what you need is the graph to have half turn symmetry, and if you keep moving it up and up and up and up and up, well, there's no way it's going to have half turn symmetry about the origin. What you need to do is you need to move it down, keep moving it down, keep moving it down, keep moving it down, keep moving it down until it goes through the origin. Let's move it over slightly. So it's go now going through the origin, and you can see that if you turn your phone or your computer upside down, well, you're going to have your half turn symmetry there about the origin. So what happened was we had the graph and really we moved it down and we moved it down so it was then going through the origin and that allowed us to have that half turn symmetry. So what we had to do was we had to move the graph down but how far down did we move it? Well if you think about it if this 0c instead of 0c was 05 well we'd have to move it down 5. If instead it was 07, well, at that point there would be 7 and we'd have to go down 7. So if it's 0c, really what we're doing is we're going down c units in order to go through the origin. So to accomplish this, the graph will have to be moved vertically down c units. Therefore, if you have f of x plus k, in order to be an odd function, the plus k must have to be equal to negative c. So if you have f of x take away c, that is what you would get. That would give you that half turn symmetry and that would make it an odd function. Part C state the value of h for which the modulus of f of x plus h is an even function. First of all, let's consider just the modulus of f of x. What does the modulus function do again? Anybody help us out? Douglas? Brilliant. What that does is it takes any part that is below your x-axis and reflects it above. So before we had our graph coming down just below your x-axis, that part there was then reflected above. So it would then bounce up, so it's looking just like that. So that is going to be the modulus of f of x, but what we've got is the modulus of f of x plus h. What does the plus h do? Well, if you have in the brackets x plus or minus a number, that's going to move it to the left or the right. Think about the end result. We are wanting an even function. And in order to be an even function, what does it need to look like? Brilliant, it needs to be symmetrical about your y-axis. So in order to be symmetrical about the y-axis, what we need to do is we need to move this V-shape back the way. We need to move it down here so it ends up looking something like that. So this here is what you want to have. So if you move it back down the way, so this V shape is going through there, so you've just got that point there at the origin, well really how far down did you need to move it? You had to move it to the left how many units? Good, you had to move it to the left two units. If you move it down two, then you would end up with the V shape just there looking like this. We can see here that that is now an even function, and it's even because it's symmetrical about your Y axis. We want the value of h. Well, the modulus flipped it, so any bit below was then above. We had that. And then, in order to move down in the negative direction, we would have to have a positive number in here. And because we moved down 2, the value of h would be 2. And it would be positive 2. The plus 2 would move it negative 2 places. That is what you would have. 
Try some of these questions in the Unit 2 booklet, page 50. Check your answers as you go. Really, you're determining whether a function is odd or even or neither. Best of luck. Have fun. Bye.